one who is born again, and you cannot be a part of our fellowship if you are not yet a born again child of God. It is the beginning of the entire journey. When a man becomes a born again child of God, God will bless him with wisdom, with creativity, with imagination. But most importantly, God will make him a covenant person. All those who are born again in this audience tonight, I want you to know you are a covenant person. Raise your hand and declare and declare and say, I am a covenant person. And because you're a covenant person, no man born of a woman shall stop you. Tonight, I declare you are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. A man who has no enemy is an idiot. No barren mango tree can attract sticks and stones. Only the fruitful mango tree. And if the enemy is attacking you, it is because you are a fruitful mango tree. But those stones and sticks shall not stop you. Shall not stop you. Can you raise your hand and shout hallelujah somebody? We, we, come. Those of you who are coming in, can you sit down? I don't like people walking up and down when we're talking about the word of God. It's an act of disrespect to God. We have 14 people here. Every time they rise up to reach their goal, the enemy would pull them down. But tonight I'm going to demand every chain sent your way shall be broken this night. Once you are a born again child of God, you have become a covenant person. And as a covenant person, let's see the book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 13. No, chapter 13 verse 5 please. 13 verse 5. Let's make it fast. Please, I want to see all the elders and leaders of the welfare. We're going to have a quick short uh, meeting after this service in preparation for our soul winners conference. Yes. The Bible, the Holy Spirit demands that you be careful how you discuss with other people. Don't you ever compare yourself with others. It leads to depression. It leads to unhappiness. It leads to pain. It leads to sorrow. That your friend has gotten a new car should not depress you. That your friend is about to get married should not depress you. That your brother has built a big house should not depress you. Why? You have not ended your journey. Anything can happen between now and tomorrow. In 1974, I went for entry visa into the United States of America. On arrival, they said to me, your form I-20 expired last year. Go, go back to wherever you came from. I said to him, I have done my send-off. They asked me, what is send-off? Send-off is an act of saying bye-bye to all your friends and announcing your plan for relocation. <laughs> they said, you are not going anywhere. Go back. I felt humiliated. I felt battered. I felt shattered. I returned to my house, locked myself up, promised never to preach again until God would visit me. Men and brethren, we serve an awesomely awesome God. He that answers prayers, he that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It doesn't matter how storm, how stormy the rain may be, he will never leave you. All your friends can walk out on you, he will never walk out on you. You know, for one month, nobody called me, nobody visited me. 
They just concluded I had failed. I also thought I had failed. I was shocked. One month of locking myself up in my room <laughs> produced an event that changed my life. After one month, I opened my door and there was a letter under the door inviting me to speak in the United States of America, signed by a governor, countersigned by a senator, countersigned by a pastor. Did I know the meaning? No. I didn't know. Do you know that the highest mountain in your life is a mountain of ignorance? I went back to the embassy, embassy office, the visa office, and showed them the letter. Remember, this was 1974, I was still a young man. They looked at me, looked at the letter, looked at me and said, you can't be the owner of this letter. Nobody can invite a small boy like you to speak in a, a world convention. You must have stolen this letter. Father, can you give me wisdom? How many of you know that wisdom is a principal thing in the school of success? This night, I'm going to ask God to bless you with our common wisdom. Yeah. Father, what do I do? God said, tell them. Anointing has nothing to do with age. <laughs> wow. Men and brethren, with this God on your side, you cannot fail. No, no, no. Use your mouth and declare and say, with this God on my side, I cannot fail. I cannot fail in life. I can't fail in business. I can't fail in my marriage. I can't fail in my ministry. Did you say it well? Yeah. Because it shall be to you according to your word. Yeah. Immediately I said this to them. They said, yes, yes, yes. You must be the owner. And they gave me what they call B1, B2 visa. I heard uh, Wole Shoika brag about his uh, uh, B1, B2 visa last week. I laughed. I had my own 30 years ago. He had his own just last week. <laughs> I don't know who is threatening you. I don't care. It could be a dream. It could be a demon. It could be a spirit. It could be a sister. It could be a brother. It could be a neighbor. I want to announce to you tonight, you cannot fail. I traveled with that visa for 20 years. I didn't, know the, I didn't know the value. Ignorance, God will punish you. My wife and I were coming out of uh, Canada with our youngest son. The immigration officer stopped me and asked me, who is the owner of this, your visa? You're wearing best bread. You must be a very poor man. This visa is for stupendously rich men in dollars. We can see you're wearing the spread. That means you're hopelessly and wretchedly and stupidly poor. You must have stolen this visa. I pinched myself, Father. So I've been carrying gold without knowing. There are some of you who have been carrying gold about. And you still live like a hopelessly wretchedly poor man. This night, God will grant you revolutionary knowledge as to who you are. Yeah. Father, who can help me? And a hostess walked up to the immigration officers and asked them why they were insulting their first class passenger. Who was that first class passenger? Me. She said to them, the wife is first class passenger, the son is, he himself is. 
and you people are stopping him to ask him stupid questions. Can you allow him to continue with his journey? The leader began to apologize to me. And I said, my friend, kneel down and apologize. Kneel down and apologize. This is my best friend. We call it Babarega. You can buy 20 of your stupid uniform. When you see a man again like me wearing this, respect him. You want to apologize? Kneel down. My wife is opposed to my being hard on people who harass me outside Nigeria. It's not, it's not, it's not approved. When you are a world citizen, you're ready to fight your battle anywhere and everywhere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On our way to Canada, in London, we went to the Canadian Embassy in London for entry visa into Canada. And they said they don't give Nigerians entry visa to anywhere except in Nigeria. Madam, who employed a racist like you? It might be silly. Either you give me this visa or I'll put down this roof. <laughs> A wife dragged me and said, Can you please try and be nice? You are traveling with a lady. Madam, after this battle, I'll look at the lady. But now, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. wow. I don't know if you know you are not an ordinary person. This awesomely awesome God says, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Hold somebody's hand and tell him or her, this God shall never leave me, nor forsake me. Any man that shall be a great man any man that shall reach his dream land, any man that shall reach his land of success, must obey the book of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. What does that say? Be faster. 22, 29 of the book of Proverbs. Yes, sir. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? The Bible says, search, find out. A girl that walks with all her heart in her kitchen, or in her parents' kitchen, or in her husband's kitchen. See it, a man that is diligent in everything he does. A man that walks with commitment and passion. A man that walks with every energy he can mobilize. A man that is thorough, a man that is organized. We were in a hotel, my wife and I. A small girl was sent as our housekeeper. Small, young. You will see this small girl lift up the pillow, lift up the mattress, lift up the bed with such casual ease. I was shocked. I asked her, how old are you? She told me, why, are you work? why do you work in a hotel? She said, I've lost my mother and my father. And you didn't spend the rest of your life grumbling. You are now on our scholarship. This morning she called me to say she's now doing her national service. She has graduated. If you want to succeed tomorrow, if you want to be a great man tomorrow and a great girl tomorrow, whatever you're doing today, do it with all your might. You don't hear me? What? Do it with all your might. No man would like to marry a girl who cannot smile. And some of our sisters can't smile. Well, if you cannot smile, we're not sure if there is no snake inside you. Beginning 
today, whatever you do, can you stand up and say to two persons, whatever you do, do it with joy, with happiness, with excitement. Let's go to the book of Daniel. If you are going to have what I call great success, great success, not just success, but great success, there is something you must do. If you are going to be a man, a woman of great success, let, okay, before we get there, hear me. Whatever the sun prevails, your covenant with God will also prevail there. You didn't hear me. Whatever the sun prevails, your covenant with God shall also prevail there. Any climate cannot stop you from shining brighter and brighter. Any stone from any enemy shall become your own stepping stone to greatness. Can you do me a favor? Find two persons, say to them, whatever the sun prevails, your covenant with God shall also prevail there. Let's see the book of Daniel chapter 12 verse 2. The book of Daniel chapter 12 verse 2. And many what? of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. No, verse 3 please. And they that be wise, they that are wise, shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. They that are wise, shall shine like the bright wind, the brightness of the firmament. I don't know if you know that wisdom is the best line for success. And I'm going to ask God to bless you with wisdom. No, you didn't hear me. No, let me put it in a better way. Wisdom in the school of success it's a principal thing. Let's see the book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. All of us, we need wisdom. And if you're going to be a great man, you must be a wise man. Yes, sir. Wisdom is the principal thing. In the school of success, in the world of success, wisdom is the principal thing, the important thing. You ask me, what is wisdom? Wisdom is the unprotected forehead of your Goliath. Whatever is blocking your way, whoever is blocking your way, is only an ordinary Goliath. And the God behind you will bring him down. Already that God is the God of your catapult. You may look small. You may look uneducated. You may look uninformed. You may have come from a hopelessly, wretchedly poor family. But every Goliath that comes your way, you will go home with his head. Yeah. I don't know if you know the God of Moses that sent Moses back to his land of failure. <laughs> Moses saw an Egyptian beat up an Israelite and killed the Egyptian and buried him in a shallow grave and ran away from Egypt. And this God sent him back after 40 years to his land of failure. I don't know where your land of failure is, but he's going to send you back there unarmed. Because he will be your arm. He will be your weapon. He will be your anointing. He will be your unction. 
And do you know that Moses was able to lead Israel out of Egypt? And tonight I announce you are next in line to perform the same feat and miracle. Yeah. All right, remember, we don't measure our enemies by their number. We measure them by the size of our God. And if our God is bigger, we'll go home and sleep. And we shall not worry. Beginning tonight, I forbid you worrying over anything. Well, what is worry? Worry is you in a dark room developing negatives. Let no problem frighten you. Let no man frighten you. Let no demon frighten you. And most importantly, let no stupid dream frighten you. I am pained to find so many believers who are ruled by stupid negative dreams. As a, as a believer, you are both that. Every stupid dream you dream, rebuke that dream. And want that dream to stay out of your way. In 1990, my wife dreamt where I died on my way to Newi. That same day, I got a letter from a bad house saying, don't go to Newi, you will die. <laughs> I said to my wife, I'm going to be the driver today. If I see death anywhere, I'll crush you. As a born again child of God, you're a soldier. A soldier of the cross. Don't be afraid of any enemy. <laughs> My driver said, okay, I, I can't watch you drive. Hey, just sit next. Take the passenger seat. I'll be the driver. We arrived in Newi. As I began to preach, God said, oh, my, there is a man naked carrying a basin of water behind you. Release my power against him. And I told the crowd, there's a man behind me, naked, carrying a basin of water. He has come to, he has come to manipulate me. But I want to show him the power that destroys it with me. And Father, I don't want him dead. I want him to become a pastor. Thou power of God, move. He threw away the benson. People went and held him. Wanted, people wanted to beat him up and had him not to. Today, he's a pastor in Newi. I went, I went to the hotel that assigned to me. As I prepared the bed to sleep, the bed went up. Father, I have grown past this stage. I am beyond manipulation. What is behind this movement of the bed? God said, they gave you a gift. You kept the gift under the bed. Remove it and throw it to the parlor. I mean, to the passage of the hotel. So I brought it out and kept it there. 5 a.m., somebody called me and said, your gift is outside. Can you come outside and collect it? Number one, how did you know it's my gift? Number two, why must we be the first person I've seen this morning? Number three, who sent you? Number four, there is danger around you. <laughs> Jesus said, the yeah, mommy, oh. I'm a man, this song, I can I can't any young I can you. I'm a man, this song, I Hallelujah. Jesus said, I'm a man, this song, I can't any young I can you. I'm a man, this song, Jesus said, "Your mambo, I got me so good and so naga. All the gimbe, gimbe charabo. Yeah, I got me so good and naga. Hallelujah." Jesus said, "Your mambo, oh, I'm a mambo this and I ain't yet. I can't na, any bien I can be oh." Jesus said, I am a man, 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 I am a 
it or not, you're already a child of success. Yeah. Let's see the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10. We take verse 11 through 13. Yes, sir. Surely the serpent will bite without enchantment. And the babbler is no better. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. 
the beginning. Anybody that shall be a great success must be watchful and careful how he or she speaks. My heart bleeds to hear some people who are supposed to be very mature speak like children. I'm going to ask you to ask God to bridle your tongue that you may speak like a wise man. You may speak like the oracle of God. Don't let your mouth lick your anointing and leave you powerless. Whatever you don't like God to say to you, don't say it to them. And when you speak rudely to anybody, apologize. There is power in saying to somebody, I am sorry the way I spoke to you. It shows your greatness. It shows your great future. It shows you'll be somebody someday. I don't know if you know, there's a way you speak to people and it will destroy your relationship with them. There was this family in my home. God asked me to visit them every time I was in the village and give them money, good money. One day, the, the wife spoke to me so rudely. I was shocked. <laughs> and I said to myself, this is my last day in this house. I just packed my things. I went to visit the governor. And the way he did speak to me, he was telling people that Christianity and Islam and um, Terebim and Seraphim and Pentecostalism, they are all just one thing. I picked my Bible and said, Your Excellency, sorry, I'll never step into this your office again. We have to be careful what we say with our mouth. I don't know if you know your mouth can destroy somebody's love for you and respect for you. Your mouth can make somebody stay away and avoid you. Therefore, this night, if you're going to be a great man, ask God to bridle your tongue. Ask him not to allow you to speak just anyhow. Show respect. Show love. Show maturity. Show care. Even the way you speak to your wife and your husband it can destroy your marriage. That you're living under the same roof with a man or a woman doesn't mean your marriage is functioning well. Take it again, let me hear, sir. Surely the serpent will bite without enchantment, and the babbler is no better. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool. The words of a wise man, they are what? Gracious. gracious. I, I, I am still amazed 40 years after this, my story happened. A friend of mine, an elder, a man who lived in the Korepene for, well, for a long time. During the war, he was a prominent man. And uh, on arrival, the, the government of the day arrested him and locked him up. The, the friend began to support his family and care for the family. But the man put the wife in a family way. And she got a child for him was shocked when the man sent for me on his return. He said, Uma, I know my wife has offended me, but I've forgiven her. I'm going to adopt that child, and I will never mention this case again all the days of my life. I asked him, why did you involve me? He said, God asked me to call you as a witness. Because I respect you and I cannot, I cannot rescind what I'm saying now. I'll love her, I'll care for her. 
If she wants to divorce me, we have two buildings, one in Calabar, one in Ekorekbene. Let her choose one. Take the house, use the house. This is the man who was wounded by his wife. We must learn how to speak like the oracles of God. It will help God to honor you more and to promote you and to pick your battles and to fight for you. Therefore, our prayer tonight will be, God, breathe on my tongue. Don't let me speak carelessly. I don't know if you know, an unruly man, an unruly woman cannot become a distinguished woman or man. Any man that just talks anyhow, you can become a great man. You can't become a great woman. Because you are measured by the way you talk. I'm sure I must have spoken more than 40 years from here. You have never heard me gossip any pastor or discuss any pastor in a bad light. It's again the rule of the game. Even when some of them have offended me, I can't discuss them publicly. Do I have anybody tonight that shall say to God, Father, breathe on my tongue. I don't like the way I speak when I'm angry. Can I have you raise up your hand to show your humility, your simplicity, your preparedness to change? This God will answer your prayer. Somebody she said the amen louder. Let's rush to the book of Proverbs. No, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 15. Whatever job you are doing, be a master of that job. Yes, sir. The labor of the foolish wearies every one of them. Yes, yes. Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Whatever job you are doing, know it very well. If you want to be a pastor, be a merchant of knowledge. I, my heart bleeds to see pastors who do not pant and pine and crave and hunger after God. Who do not want to know more about this God. I have been preaching for 69 years. I still struggle to study six hours a day. Because yesterday's manna is not good for today's hunger. Whoever shall be a great preacher must be a merchant of knowledge. Okay, you can't build your church without building yourself first. You can't even build your marriage without building yourself. As a woman, it is, it is sad to see a woman treat her husband as though he is nobody. I don't care what your qualification is. The same thing goes for the man. Treat your wife with care and respect. Make her your sister. Make her your first aid doctor. Make her your manager. Make her the mother of your children. And learn how to speak to her lovingly and caringly. Because women are greatly blessed by God and gifted by God. Every woman you know has 120 trillion connections in her memory area. They don't forget, don't forgive. Therefore, be careful how you talk to them. Or you will not see the woman in her that makes the woman she is. Are you still here? Everyone who wants to be successful as you go through life, I have said before, Number one, you must be very, very diligent in everything you do. Show interest. Show commitment. I am happy to announce that we have people here who have been attending this fellowship the last 40 years. Every Wednesday, they are here. And they have become like being planted in the household of God. The blessing God promised those who abide in his home will always go with them. Number two, be everything you are called to do, do it with all your heart. 
if you are saving your husband, the Bible commands to obey the, the, the law of extra mile. What does that mean? Do for your wife, your husband, more than an ordinary wife would do, more than an ordinary husband would do. Don't wait for her to beg you for money. Give her money before she will ask you for money. And when you eat her food, whether cooked by the cook or your housemaid or she, please remember to appreciate and thank her for that food. When she dresses up for service, men and brethren, celebrate her because she dresses to honor you. Darling, you are smashing and gorgeously pretty. What a wife God gave me. You hear her saying, Kelerem Chimo. But there's a way you treat her, you hear her say, Where more where me But there is something the Bible demands of all of us. The Bible says, study to be silent. We should learn to know when to talk, when not to talk. There are people who can just shut up their mouth. Have you ever seen a man arrive at your home with his wife, and the wife will not close her mouth? She wants to be part of every argument. She wants to win every argument. Oh, she wants to talk because she wants to hear her voice. As she leaves that house, everybody will know she came from a home where nobody trained her. She fits only to be able to pack out. When you walk with her husband to another man's house, let the men talk. When the wife comes out, two of you can talk. If you must say something, let it be something reasonable, something that makes sense. That's something that shows your maturity, your maturity and your intelligence. Do you all agree with me? Then raise your hand and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number four, every man that wants to be successful must be a prayer warrior. You must learn how to pray. The Bible says we should pray without what? Ceasing. I, I am amazed some people don't know how to pray except when they kneel down. You can pray while lying down, you can pray while eating, you can pray while cooking. You need to practice the presence of God and talk to him all the time. And his power will rest upon you. Amen. Number five. Only a giver shall be a great man. Let's see the book of Luke. Chapter 6, we take verse 38. What does it say, sir? Give. Give. And it shall be given unto the, you. The Bible said, give, and this means give anything. For life is an echo. What you put in is what you bring out. Give. Give anything. Give smile. Give greeting. Give anything. And what will happen, sir? It shall be given, it shall unto, be given you. unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken, and running over. Shall who? Men. Who are those men? Those men are your destiny helpers. I'm amazed there are people who come here, they don't know the principle of giving, the reward of giving, the promotion of giving. When you give, the Bible says, heaven will send your destiny helper to give back to you what you have given. There is nothing more exciting than to hear somebody say, God sent me. Like yesterday, a man came in here from Lagos and said, God sent him to bring me money. And he's a man from my village. People from my village don't give that way. I was shocked. The man said, God sent me. I have come all the way from Lagos with uh, this bundle of money. Don't ask me how much. I won't tell you. Remember, I told you the story of what happened in, in, in Port Harcourt a few months ago. 
I sang in a meeting. Somebody viewed the program. And God said to him, send him money. Our God makes one day, every day, as a messenger from heaven to bless you with blessings. Every day of your life is a messenger sent by God to bless you. When you say you are a believer and you can spend one week without a testimony, you died and nobody buried you. That's why you're still here. Heaven has forgotten you because you are no longer giving to God and to people. Right where you are this night, I want you to take it from me. The Bible says what? Give. I have it as a practice. Everywhere I raise money, I'll give first before I ask others to give. And when I give, God is owing me. When I give, God will pay. When I give, God will pay on time. When I give, God will pay according to my needs. When I, when I give, heaven is owing me. And that God who has done this for me will do it for you. Yeah. That way you won't run out of money. <laughs> I had a phone call somebody said to me, when you were preaching, you said you can't run out of money. Why? I was amused. Will I start telling her why and how and when? Beginning tonight, I want your life to demand explanation. No, you didn't hear me. What did I say? I want what? Your life. To do what? Let people ask you, how do you, how do, you do this? How do you survive? How do you provide for the family? Oh, my first son, when he was walking in Sierra Leone, called me after three years of working there. He asked me, Daddy, we have more than 30 people in our house. How do you feed them? I can't take care of myself with my slide as a banker. But how do you feed those in our house? All those cars in our compound, how do you maintain them? I, I said to him, you have passed the exam. I wanted it to pass. And you can come back to Nigeria for the rest of the, the, rest of the lessons. And I'll help you increase your income. I'll help you earn more than you ever earned. And that's where we are now. Are you still here? As a, as a believer, you must, you must make your relations say, we'll go with you, for we have seen that God's hand is upon your life. Okay, can we see the book of Zechariah chapter 8, verse 22 and 23? Zechariah 8, 22, 23. Yeah, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Ten men shall take Ten hold. members of your family shall come. Out of all languages of the nations, yes, even shall take hold of. They will take hold of your dress. Of him that he is a Jew, saying, and they will say to you, "We will go with you. We will go with you, for we have heard for that, we heard that the you. Lord is with you." Hey, who wants to get there? Where your family members will respect you and honor you, and say, "We want to be like you," and we shall go to church with you, for we now know the Lord is with you. I, 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 did you hear me? Who wants to get there? Wow. This night is your night of new beginning. Yeah. I want you to hear me. 2,000 enemies cannot stop you. Yeah. Because he who is mighty is with you. Yeah. <laughs> He whose presence can mock anything that mocks you is with you. And tonight I announce, whoever mocks you, whatever mocks you, whatever spirit mocks you, whatever situation mocks you, that situation shall not be mocked by your God. We are back to the book of Joshua chapter 1. 
Let's take verse 8. Amana. Eye na banse amana. Ae. Amana. Eye na banse amana. So so no. Oh, amana. Amana. Eye na basi amana. Amana. So so no. Amana mo, eye na na mo, so so Amana mo, 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 amana If you're a born again child of God, you have become a covenant person. And the rule of this game is that you must have an encounter 
the living word of God, the presence of the living spirit of God, morning and evening. Even when you're lying down, you can still talk to God. We are amazingly great people. This hour, God waits to discuss with us. And the more you talk with him, the more he will polish you. The more he will anoint you. The more he will grease you. The more he will make you more than a conqueror. Read on, sir. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. Yes, sir. But thou shalt meditate therein. Thou shalt meditate therein. Meditation leads you to the treasures of the Bible. Meditation takes you to the treasures of the Bible. It, it also grants you what I call revelational knowledge. It, it takes you to what I call an insightful knowledge. It helps you be in touch with God. It helps you be on the same page with God. It helps God to answer your questions and solve your problems. But how many of you know it leads to God giving you instructions? And instructions is the gateway to distinction. No. Yes. No, let me bring it down. Let's see the book of the, the book of uh, Job, chapter 29, we take verse 4. I want you to hear what I'm about to share with you. This. When you come to a meeting like this, carry your pain. Write down the high points of that discussion. There are things God will ask you to record and note and hide in your heart. Yes, there are things we call, we call it the secrets of the Lord. In a meeting of this kind, there are things God will show you, said to you, revealed to you. And those secrets will help, help you become an uncommon successful person. Yes, sir. What does it say? As I was in the days of As my I youth. As I was in the days of my when youth. When the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. When the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. When the Almighty was yet wait, with wait, me. Wait. As a believer, everywhere the word is preached. There are secrets God will show you. Others will never know. <sighs> he will show you how to handle a difficult wife, a difficult husband. He will show you how to handle a bad situation. He will show you how to pray consistently. He will show you how to hear the voice of God. It's like today I have said there are 14 persons who have been struggling to have an uncommon success. Every time they're close to a breakthrough, something will go wrong. But if they are ready for a miracle tonight, I'm going to speak against what speaks against them. 